right hello and welcome uh, <clears throat> this is a follow-up video to the previous videos I've done on the Ukraine invasion and the role or the possible role of radio in in that in that war I'm, I'm hoping this will be the last video in this series I, I don't as yet plan to do any more but I just wanted to uh, follow up on the previous video where I talked about um, <clears throat> uh, some of the military frequencies that are readily available on the internet that are worth monitoring as yet um, the internet and mobile networks are mostly operational there has been a number of blackouts a number of areas are struggling now with mobile outages and internet outages we we did see that um, Starlink has been sent over for certain parts of the Ukraine so that's filling in some of the gaps the the chances of um, the telecommunication systems being compromised is very high so um, what we are seeing though is a use of apps like Telegram, Signal and Zello um, Zello for those of you who may not be um, aware of it is a it's an app you can get on your phone you can also use um, oh, give me a second also use um, these sort of m mobile devices it's like a um, internet radio some of the early thoughts around will we see amateur radio being used more and more in the conflict that's yet to appear from a um, civilian point of view However, there has been some really interesting developments this past week around people actually being able to intercept um, Russian military uh, transmissions. By the sounds of it, reading around the subject, it sounds as if the Russian invading army hadn't planned this ground assault, if that's what it's called. They hadn't planned this assault very well at all it was very under um the supplies the equipment they were using very um unorganized to say the least so we are we are seeing reports of analog transmissions from ground forces being received via web sdrs and those recordings are then being sent to translators and the the recordings being translated of course there is the uh, risk here of um, counterfeit uh, misinformation disinformation uh, propaganda from both sides around these uh, transmissions however there's there's a um, a british company called shadow break shadow break international and these have been involved in coordinating um, and also eavesdropping um, themselves on a lot of these transmissions and then these recordings are sent out to volunteers who then work on um, who then work on translating the the audio <laughs> Um, I'm going to share a number of frequencies that have been verified where you can uh, monitor and if you can get any recordings then there is a um, there's a route for sharing those recordings as well a number of people using web SDRs uh, so these are web based uh, software defined radios um, I've got the Sun uh, SDR Pro here so I can run two receivers uh, I've picked up a little bit of traffic I picked up um, I think it was the Navy um, CW transmissions now it's 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 really important at this point just to emphasize that there are a lot of um, incorrect posts social media posts going out with um, supposed captured um, frequencies um, just be just just verify if you come across if you read on reddit or Twitter or Facebook 
about a captured frequencies just read around it a little bit just just to make sure that that the, those frequencies are actually um, are real so there's a a, a few good um, links to tweets which I'll put into the comments below uh, both from shadow break themselves but also from anonymous TV uh, the anonymous group the anon um, are also involved in the radio aspects of, of the war and then themselves they've been crowdsourcing a lot of these recordings so I'll put some links in there'll be lots of frequencies down there to um, to add to your receivers and to scan through it's it's worth um, if you want to get involved in that just to follow some of those links so some of the some of the frequency ranges are four four meg five megahertz and um you can using just a simple uh, sdr receiver and a piece of wire and a, and a fishing pole in the back garden you can on a good day when the propagation is working in your favor you may be able to pick some of the transmissions up however some of the the equipment that's being used is not made for long distance if it so happens to hit the skip <coughs> and take a bit of a hop then you might pick that up from the uk maybe um parts of um western europe however the use of hf in this case is only meant to be uh, that ground propagation only meant to be um, a hundred or so miles or even uh, vertical transmissions up and down not really a sort of um, low angle of takeoff uh, so it may be that using the web SDR is the best way to tune into some of these frequencies something else that 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 struck me as quite surprising and there's a, a report of a <coughs> a bowfang radio being used by the Russian conscripts and um, there's an image of it being circulated on the internet I'm not 100% sure uh, how accurate that is I'm not sure if it's been fact checked and there are reports of um, local radio operators jamming those radios by just singing shouting playing music all over those uh, frequencies on 2 meters and 70 sems so on the previous few videos regarding this this invasion I've had um, some comments questions and um, corrections so thank you to everybody that has contributed so far this is not not my normal content I, I normally do ham radio bit of military radio outdoors camping glamping um, that kind of that kind of thing <clears throat> it's just that w this is not um, normal times at the moment so I thought to put a few videos together um, I've had a few people mention that um, it seems a bit counterintuitive for the Ukraine uh, Amateur Radio Society to uh, put a ban on the use of amateur radio well it's a state of emergency um, however in the age of social media it is a bit um, uh, just seem a bit pointless really I've also had uh, a few people say to me in the comments well, what's the point of actually listening to any military uh, transmissions they'll all be in Russian well the point is like I mentioned already is that actually working together people are already starting to collect those uh, transmissions and there's a um, number of volunteers now or who are working together to translate those transmissions and it, you know, it's proving to provide some useful information so that's one of the intentions of actually putting out some of those early frequencies was to just to add to that uh, process Mary Baker has asked uh, I'm at a loss whether or not I can listen in on my on my shortwave is it possible I can say um, quite a lot of the activities that with about four or five meg um, if if the propagation is working in your favor depends where you are but depends where you're based 
you may get um, some of those transmissions. However, they, the, the, the equipment and the antennas used by a lot of these forces is not meant for uh, DX, not meant for long distance. Um, but it's just pure luck. I, I suspect whether you get a decent hop and a decent bounce and uh, pick up anything the further away you are from um, the, the point of transmission. So don't forget, um, the in the description below, I'll be adding some more of the links and the frequencies to check out. So I'm planning for this to be the last video in this short series on the invasion. I'm hoping to get back to uh, my normal content. I'm hoping to get back outdoors as well. I've, um, I've been struggling with this COVID virus for a few days now. So I'm hoping in the next few days I'll be able to get back out as soon as I can breathe properly. Um, but thank you for um, supporting the channel. Thank you for all the new subscribers. I hope you get a chance to look around the channel and see some of the more fun content that I put out. And I'll see you on the next video. So bye bye for now.